So what's going on guys? DIY Dan, Saltwater Junkie here again. And I'm gonna give you an update on my four main displays all running off one sump filtration behind the wall. So we're gonna go over a couple things on the system including the huge algae scrubber build I did. It's been doing great to reduce the nitrates in my system. So keep in mind, I'm not gonna post a video just to post a video. That's why I don't do regular updates because I don't want to waste your time if there's not really anything notable going on or changing in my systems. So let's get to it. This is my filtration room for the four main displays off of one sump filtration. My nitrates were pushing about 50 to 60 on this entire system. Uh, that's when I decided to build this algae scrubber build. Ever since I have done that, my nitrates have been dropping. Uh, I'm sitting at about 20 to 25 parts per million now. And I can attribute that only to this huge algae scrubber build because that's when they started dropping. Now the growth has slowed down a little bit. And I believe that's just because my nitrates are lower. There's not as many nutrients that the algae scrubbers are feeding off of. So when I first installed this, after the initial algae started growing, obviously, I was having to clean these screens off every two weeks. Now I'm in about three weeks, but they're still producing really, really well. One thing I did not foresee happening, and it's not that big of a deal, but I do have some algae starting to grow on my bottom mesh that I just put there to keep the algae from going into the sump. Uh, it's not that big of a deal when I clean the screens, I just kind of wipe that up as well. So I ended up getting water in one of my algae scrubber lights. And I think what happened was, is my screens were only about an inch away from the lights. And I think some water started spraying off the screen and right on top of the light. So what I did to correct this was I just flipped my screens around. So now I've got a three inch gap instead of a one inch gap. That should correct the problem. If not, I could always put a piece of plexiglass between the light and the screens, but we're gonna see what happens with this. My concern with doing the plexiglass is that water might start getting on the plexiglass, algae will start growing on it, and then I've got something else I've gotta clean and maintain. Uh, so that's why for now, we're just gonna leave the space here and see how that does. These lights do say they are suitable for damp conditions, but obviously not completely waterproof. I do need to get the plastic cover to block the algae from growing inside my supply tubes. I haven't done that yet. One downside of the huge algae scrubber is I'm going through about two, two and a half times the amount of water in my auto top off. That's a 12 gallon container. I used to only fill that maybe once every five or six days. Now I'm at every two to three days. Uh, so that is one downside, but on the plus side, I also have not had to have my cooling fan cooling down my sump. Uh, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona in the middle of summer. We keep the house at about 76 degrees during the day and about 75 degrees at night. Last summer, I had to have a huge box fan cooling my sump, uh, controlled by my temperature controller here. I believe it's because all the water dissipating across that algae uh, is just cooling the water temperature down quite a bit. Uh, on the other hand, once I hit winter time, I might have to add an extra heater. So I've really got to start paying attention to that to see if my heaters are maintaining in the winter time because obviously that algae scrubber is keeping it cooler in the summer. But besides those couple of issues, uh, the benefits way outweigh the downside. So. Um, we'll correct these couple of things and we should be good to go. So since my skimmer is about ready to be emptied, I figured I'd show you how easy it is, being as though I have my storage container and my electrical box here. Now I also have a level switch on here that if the storage container gets full, it shuts the protein skimmer down as well. I'm going to go ahead and shut down the protein skimmer and then take my lid off. Whenever I take this off and uh, empty it, I always check my level switch to make sure it's functioning properly. and then pull the storage container out and drain it. Uh, about every two to three weeks, I have to drain that storage container. So as far as my 75 gallon with my two eels, I strictly moved the eels over here from the 125. I didn't take any sand, rock, or anything over with it. And somehow or another, I got the red bubble algae that I had the problem with over there in here and I can't put anything in with it again to eliminate it because the eels will eat whatever I try and put in to eliminate the algae. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. My refugium, uh, I'm about to have to start removing some more chato because it is overgrowing. 
algae scrubbers on this are doing really really well I just cleaned that one and actually forgot to turn it on for a couple days so it's back to like nothing but it's growing pretty quickly again uh, I need to clean that one off I went ahead and cleaned that one algae scrubber screen real quick just so you can see how much came off of it so I am going to discontinue the use of my uh, media reactor for now I'm trying to simplify this system the pump went out and I wanted to try it without it anyways by what it looks like, I think the algae scrubber is doing 90% of the work as far as removing the nitrates. I probably will leave the denitrator even though I don't really think it's done anything for my nitrate removal. But it doesn't really take up that much room and it does act as an extra biological filtration. So I'll probably leave it in the system. Plus I'm not using any extra pumps or anything to run that. Uh, that's another reason why I'm removing the media reactor because it's just an extra pump, extra heat source. Uh, that I just don't need, hopefully. If there is something you guys see in my systems that you're interested in knowing about, uh, any questions you have, throw them in the comments, and I'll try and answer them or do a video on that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and hope to see you on the next one. Have a good one. Later.